What if someone snorted crack while remaking the C programming language? Well, that's C++, but what if it was graphics? Hi, I'm Nikoro, and I'm a certified dumb. Most of the code in a game governs the game's logic, ways in which inputs are processed into the game actions, enemy AI responds to things the player does, and various behind-the-scenes stuff. Most of you probably write this using GDScript, C Sharp, or C++ if you're a masochist, but shaders are a little different. The sole purpose of a shader is to manipulate basically anything that can be rendered to the screen. Godot uses OpenGL to render things and so it uses GLSL, where GL in GLSL stands for OpenGL because somebody forgot how acronyms work. To be very frank, I get confused between these terms pretty often myself. There's GLSL, HLSL, CG, LSD. Remember how I said Godot uses GLSL? Well, that was a lie. Godot actually uses a simplified custom version of GLSL that is tightly integrated with the engine and has the added benefit of less features. Of course, there's ways to work around this, I've made literally every shader you've seen on this channel, but how? Textures are really just images, and images come in all sorts of different sizes called resolutions. Applying a texture onto an object though poses several problems. Take for instance the humble rectangle, which is also called a quad. If I wanted to apply a 256 by 256 texture onto it, I could place the pixel at 0, 0 on the top left while placing the pixel at 256, 256 on the bottom right and let everything else just be in between that. But what if I change the resolution to 512 by 512? Now only a quarter of the whole image is displayed on this quad which is no good. Instead a system was needed where we could just place the beginning of the texture at the beginning of the object and the end of the texture at the end of the object. This is what the UV system does where U is the x-axis and V is the y-axis because the creators just decided to name their coordinates after letters that absolutely no one is familiar with. The UV runs from 0 to 1 on both axes, meaning that 0, 0 is the top left of the texture and 1, 1 is the bottom right of the texture regardless of what its resolution is. But that's not what shaders are about. Shaders are meant to manipulate stuff. For example, if I wanted to move a texture in some direction, I can simply just add that direction to the UV coordinate when sampling the texture. If you have already completed the stereotypical procedural Minecraft clone of being an indie game developer, watched a Sebastian Log video, have nothing better to do in life or worse, studied computer science at a university, then you might be familiar with the term Perlin noise. Noise functions are just a bunch of math that produces cool wavy looking stuff. There are many different kinds of wavy noise patterns such as the aforementioned Perlin noise, simplex noise and whirly noise that has the cool Voronoi DLC that looks nothing like anything. The output of these mathematical functions can be stored onto pixels on a texture, creating a noise texture. Ideally, these values would lie somewhere in the range between 0 and 1 if we exclude the people who use HDR values or are otherwise referred to as lunatics. We can read this noise texture the same way we read any other texture using our UV system, but since reading this texture returns a value between 0 and 1, we can add that to the UV coordinates of literally anything else and create these cool wave-like distortions. If we multiply the noise value by a number less than 1, we can tone down its strength. And there you go, you now know how to make 95% of all shaders that have ever been created. Don't believe me? Background distortion effect. Just add the noise to the screen texture's UV coordinates. Grass waving in the wind. Use three noise values and add them on each axis of the grass blade's position. Smash Ultimate's character selection background. Just take the average of two noise values moving at different speeds and add color to them. Clouds in the sky, use one noise value to determine the color and then subtract a second noise value to make some parts invisible. Waving leaves, take a 2D noise texture and offset it using the Y value of the leaves, then sample it and do basically the same thing as with the grass. And basically every other shader is the same nonsense I just described to you, who said shaders were hard. People keep asking me how do I get into shaders, isn't there a lot of math involved? 
Nah, just move UV coordinates with the noise texture and you'll probably be able to make anything. And don't worry about the syntax either, like any language you'll pick it up the more you use it. Of course, everything I've talked about is a gross oversimplification of the nightmare fuel that goes into the shaders that I make. It doesn't include anything talking about I the light even models explained or what the steps, the smooth step, by look functions are, are, if state texture levels are shaders, used in shaders, why we have to put it in the but the truth is unless you're making some kind of AAA based grass physics system like me, you probably don't need to run into too many of those things. Most of the shaders I've written usually just have something to do with noise textures and UV coordinates, but perhaps I ought to explain the edge functions and interpolation in a future video. After all, with just those three you'd be able to make. Interested in shaders? Well, I do a lot of tutorials on them and I try to make things easy and fun, so sub to my channel. Lyrics apaise, je rap les oiseaux stèse. Fais-toi plaisir, écoute ça avec ta délice. Ce matin, je suis bien dans ma peau, j'ai la pêche, telle cette femme qui dame des parts de tarte par dizaines. Te dis pas frappé par un maléfice. Recommence ta vie à zéro quand je la redémarre à moins dix. Je suis né blasé sans un sou. Collision avec mes obstacles. Tourne le pire à la dérision, leur spectacle.